I've done a few videos that is pretty controversial, but I'm sure this one will fit that bill as well. Stay tuned. So in my previous video about the progression ignition system, it got my wheels turning after the fact. And that's how normally my videos go. The one thing that I have not covered on my channel is your timing curve. You're doing it wrong. And that's the subject of this video. When you watch any video of people on an engine dyno or whatever the case is, they start out a new build and they always adjust the timing first and then once they get that where they think it should be then they go and adjust the carb and that's wrong and today i'm going to tell you why that's wrong Before I get into the knee-deep discussion about timing curves and fuel curves, I want to show you in a real distributor what we're actually talking about. This is the Mallory Billet Comp distributor that was in Mixed Up Boss. And when I'm talking about mechanical advance, this is what I'm referring to right here, okay? You see you've got these springs on here that will uh, expand out as RPM increases. And then of course, here's your vacuum advance. Even though the two are separate, they are loosely connected and we'll get into that down the road. But the drawback to these type distributors is you're limited by the spring selection that you can choose. You can choose light springs, medium springs, heavy springs, and there is a bushing under the bottom side here that will limit the amount of travel, aka advance, that you actually see in your engine. The purpose for a mechanical advance in your engine is based on a few different variables. You have to be able to accelerate from a dead stop with an engine without detonation. And the only way to do that is have a timing curve. You, many different factors come into play, such as the weight of the vehicle, uh, the torque converter selection, the gearing of it, how much compression the engine has, the fuel that you're using, the combustion shape and size. Those are things that a tribute to what ends up being the perfect mechanical advance. Even though that this is an analog design, if you will, as it's only RPM based, no matter how much load is on the engine, if the engine is at a given RPM, these we uh, weights are going to be at a certain predetermined amount of advance. And that's where limitations of that type system comes into play. Now that you know what a mechanical advance is, let's talk about it in terms of drag strip performance. A lot of drag racers will do what is called locking out the distributor. In a street driven car, this really shouldn't be done as you're giving away a lot of untapped potential performance by doing that. Most people who do it, you have to have a loose converter, you have to have a good amount of gearing and the vehicle needs to be light in order for you not to see detonation in that type situation because what ends up happening is you're you're force feeding a locked out amount of advance say 36 degrees at 2000 rpm and if the engine was to see a high amount of load guess what it would be detonating at that point but by having those loose converters, deep gearing, light car. It's in that RPM range for just a small amount of time and the engine actually doesn't get pulled down by the converter until the upper RPM ranges, which makes it 
a viable choice for someone to do. The thing about it is, driving it around on the street and trying to crank a car that has locked out timing, well, causes problems because the starter wants to drag and it's just not ideal for just putting around town. If I have to give EFI a major prop, it's actually not in the fuel delivery, it's actually in the spark management. I think that is one of the untold truths about EFI is in fact that the amount that you can control ignition more precisely than this analog distributor here and actually give the engine what it wants as far as timing at a given RPM versus load versus just something that is static and is going to deliver that regardless of the environment that the vehicle is in, if that makes any sense. So what makes for getting the proper tunability and why do I say that you're doing it wrong? Well, if you're setting your timing and adjusting your mechanical advance and your vacuum advance before you do any carb tuning, you are really shortchanging yourself in the performance that you could be getting out of your combination because there's other factors at play. One being the fuel that you're using, okay? Let's say that every engine has what I would consider a lean burn limit, which is the, the leanest that you can run that engine and still get decent performance, and then it just completely falls off and spark energy cannot keep up with the demand of having a really lean mixture in the chamber. So if I'm tuning an engine, and one of the things that I did on Mixed Up Boss is I spent an enormous amount of time working on the fuel curve, and then on the ignition side, it didn't take as long because I have that progression ignition distributor, and I was able to go in and program and find the proper uh, timing that was needed for that air fill ratio that I was using. So if I have high compression and let's say that I'm using 93 octane, which is what I run in Mixed Up Boss, and it's 11 to 1 compression, and on the dyno we seen that it made best power at 30 degrees of timing. Hmm, pretty simple. Well, if I switch fuels, let's say that I go to uh, say 100 octane race fuel, you know, most people will say, well, the timing should remain the same because of the combustion chamber size and shape and all of that. That's what dictates it. And that's true to a certain extent. But the burn rate of that fuel might be different than the fuel that I was using, whether it being oxygenated fuel or non-oxygenated, uh, the specific gravity of it. And so when you take those things into consideration, it may require a degree more, a degree less of timing. And so you can't assume that the same timing that was used for this type of fuel on this day is going to give the best result for another type of fuel. And so that's why I put emphasis on tuning the air fuel ratio with the carburetors or fuel injection before I really fine tune the ignition side of things because it's all about getting to the same place i'm not saying that you can't get there by doing it the other way around it's going to take you longer to get there when it comes to vacuum advance that is a completely different world because now we're not under max load situations we're under part throttle and we're trying to find drivability and fuel economy um, when i do my fuel economy stuff on casper in the past i will lean the carburetors out until i find that lean burn limit okay 
And then once I find that air fuel ratio, then I start moving to the time of advance because the vacuum advance needs to, if you have a lean mixture in the chamber, that means you have to light that spark off much sooner for you to get the power out of that mixture that's in the chamber at the right time because it's all about cylinder pressure and time. If I light it off too late, what that means is by the time the combustion process has taken place, the piston is already headed down the cylinder and I'm not maximizing the pressure that could be there and actually getting more power for the less amount of fuel. Does that make sense? I hope so. Uh, there's a lot of variables that come into play when you're doing this type of work. And even on the vacuum advance distributor, you have this spring diaphragm. Now this one is actually adjustable. You can insert an Allen key into that nipple and adjust the rate in which the vacuum advance starts to pull, so on and so forth. But you're still limited to the confines of what this can actually deliver. You will get close with an, your engine, but you really can't get exact. And that's one of the attributes I think that's overlooked with that new distributor that I have and something that I'm, I'm playing around with and I'm going to get it there is because I can program that ignition to give the engine what it wants versus what I think it wants and versus what this distributor can actually give. So it's a process. You know, when it comes to setting up mechanical advances, David and I had a talk a while ago, and he was telling me a story. Now, this is really cool stuff here, where you could take and remove or add metal to the reluctor wheel right here to change the base timing on a particular cylinder. So let's say my rotor phasing is like this right here and that's number one i would come here to this reluctor wheel and remove metal or add metal to it depending on what i'm wanting to do and i could change the base timing on that one cylinder versus all eight of them david said in some of his previous testing that he was able to pick up nearly 16 horsepower on a cup car engine by doing that combined with the staggered jetting in a particular cylinder and it just goes to show you that when you come to looking for horsepower sometimes you find it in the most unusual spots and you have to be willing to dig into those spots and explore to find it Well, that's a lot of information. Basically, this is a simple video covering a pretty complicated subject. And leave it in the comments. Do you think I'm crazy or do you think I'm on track? The one thing that I've learned working with DV all of these years is having to remove my implicit bias on issues when working with engines. Because I too used to do it the other way until he showed me the way he does it. Now, my typical situation of how I set an engine up on a street-driven car on an engine that hasn't been dynoed, I will put the distributor in with the slowest curve, normally the curve that comes with the distributor. I will get the air fuel mixture right with the carburetor, at first at idle, then I will work on part throttle, and then I'll work on the main circuit, and then I will go and adjust for wide open throttle through the power valve channel restrictions. Once I have all of that where I want it, then I will start adding timing. As that gives me a degree of safety when I'm tuning the vehicle of having a really lean mixture with a lot of timing too early. That way I can get the optimized result that I'm actually looking for. So I hope you learned something from this video and yeah, leave it in the comments. 
Am I crazy? So until next time, this is Andy from Unity Motorsports Garage. I will catch you later.